My name is Jennifer Kennedy. I'm an attorney, and I've been following all of the vaccine litigation that we've had against these mandates that we've been seeing of all kinds. My focus has been the mandates against the kids. And as you know, LAUSD tried to come out with a vaccine mandate in the fall. They stood down, but some other schools did not, and they persisted with their vaccine mandate. And these kids have been holding the line and refusing, declining that experimental injection, but they've been kicked out of school for doing so. So how, how does that work exactly? How, how is it that they've been holding the line? What is it that they've been doing in school? Well, what they've been doing to holding the line is refusing to get that shot that they don't need or don't want for whatever reason and refusing to be basically forced into that in order to stay on campus because the vaccine the, the vaccine mandate says you got to get that shot or you're kicked out of in-person learning so these kids behind me are in forced into independent study 100 percent lockdown learning it's all online there's no live instruction it's totally subpar they've been pulled out of their ap classes pulled out of their sports pulled out of their electives their courses They're, these are kids getting ready for college now what what is it that uh, parents at home can do to fight back if their students at their school are being asked that they must be vaccinated. What is it that you've been able to find legally to fight back against these mandates? The interesting thing, legally, it's a hard battle right now in California because the judges are not yet granting any relief, even though schools and districts don't have the power to assert a vaccine mandate. But what we've learned, what we know we can do, is non-compliance. We just say no, and we hold the line. That's what I mean. They're not giving in to an illegal request. And that is why LAUSD stood down after 34,000 kids said no. They realized they couldn't push all those kids into independent study. Now, what's going to happen come the fall when uh, Newsom's vaccine mandate for all students across California, we even heard that it's going to be going to the public school, private school, and even charter schools. What, what, are, you, uh, what are you hoping to do by then that might be able to overturn that? Well, see, that's the crazy thing. So Newsom came out in October saying that there was going to be a new vaccine added to the schedule for COVID, but that hasn't happened. And Gavin Newsom himself cannot dictate that from his lofty perch. That's a procedure we have, California Department of Health and our legislature, and that hasn't happened. Richard Pan has introduced SB 871 to require babies from zero all the way kids through uh, K-12 to get the vax. That hasn't happened either. So right now, there is nothing. There is no law, no requirement for fall of 2022. So we'll just see. And that's another thing that parents can do. Hold the line. Fight SB 871 with everything you have. Because that is, that's that's going to change everything if that makes it on the books. How would you encourage parents to get more involved? Is there organizations that you work with? How can they contact you if they want legal representation or maybe uh, your firm? Uh, how can they fight between now till the fall to ensure that the vaccine mandate doesn't pass? We have so many great organizations fighting. We've got Children's Health Defense, our California chapter. We have the Unity Project. We have the lawsuits that filed by the Amistad, Andalin, and Corn firm. We have every possible kind of, we have Physicians for Informed Consent. Every parent, every individual can go to any one of those entities and see how they can donate or how they can support and also how they can uh, contact their legislators to find out. That's one of the best ways that they can do is actually pay attention and get involved.